Our brain is incredibly complex, and its formation during development involves processes that are not seen in most animals. In our recent work, we have identified a cell type that is specific to the human brain and is responsible for a neurodevelopmental disorder called tuberous sclerosis. Patients that suffer from tuberous sclerosis can have severe epilepsy, and this can be very hard to treat sometimes. They can also have psychiatric symptoms, such as autism or learning difficulties. Tuberous sclerosis patients also often have specific abnormalities in the brain. They can have tumors, which arise along the lateral ventricles, and they can also have disorganized regions, which arise in the cortex, and these disorganized regions are called tubers. And these tubers are actually where tuberous sclerosis got its name from. To study tuberous sclerosis, we developed cerebral organoids. Cerebral organoids are a 3D cell culture model that mimics the development of the human brain. And we can derive those organoids from basically any patient. In our study, we derived cerebral organoids from tuberous sclerosis patients. And when we analyzed those cerebral organoids, we saw that they could recapitulate the disease. So in our cerebral organoids, we saw tumors, and they also had disorganized regions that resemble the tuber regions in the patient brains. When we analyzed these organoids further, what we found was that a specific cell type that we find in humans' brains that we don't, for example, find in mouse brains was responsible for these brain abnormalities. So this cell type just proliferated too much and generated those abnormalities. So taken together, our study shows us that our brains are actually very different from a mouse brain. And it also makes us speculate that other diseases like autism, schizophrenia, or even brain cancer could arise from such human-specific processes. We propose that human-specific processes of brain development and pathology might be involved in other known brain disorders for which currently no therapy exists. And so, as a next step, we are planning to investigate those disorders using our cerebral organoid model. And we hope that this human model system will shed some light on the specific processes that regulate those disorders and have been overlooked for far too long.